morning, everybody. Can people hear me at the back? Fantastic. Thanks very much for coming to the seminar this morning. It's lovely to see so many old faces in the nicest possible way, um, and some new ones as well. Um, we have a bit of a challenge today, partly because we're a little bit pushed for time. We want to respect people's lunch breaks, etc. Um, recognise that that's as, as much a part of being at the convention as some of the seminars are. We've got quite a lot to pack in, and I'm also conscious that some of you will have heard the material that we're going to cover quite recently over the last couple of months as we've kind of done our tour bus guide of England and Wales in, in doing consultation events. So the challenge for us today really is for us to get what we want out of the workshop. In true inspectorate fashion, we will be asking you some questions, um, but also to give, of course, you the opportunity to ask of us anything that you need to know from what we're presenting today. So it's a mixture of me standing here with colleagues presenting some of the information, some of the detail that we have already developed, and some more um, interactive type sessions as well. Quite how we're going to do that with such a big group, I'm not entirely sure, but we will think of a way between now and in the next half hour or so. Okay, so the aim is to provide you with information about how we're intending to inspect youth offending teams from April of next year. Um, we say from April of next year, our first live inspection is actually likely to be June, but we are running a series of pilots which take us from around December time this year through to spring next year. So it's a bit of a mixed picture really in terms of a series of pilot inspections and the live inspection program as well. Okay, just briefly wanted to give people an overview of what we've done so far in terms of talking to yachts and others about the work that we're developing. So we've run six workshops with yachts altogether, uh, very well attended. Over the course of those, I think we've spoken to around 220 youth justice professionals, predominantly yacht managers and operational managers, but some practitioners and some senior strategic local authority managers have attended those as well. So a really good mixture. They've been incredibly useful to us in terms of that kind of early consultation, particularly around the standards that we're looking to inspect yachts on from next year. So thanks to everybody that's contributed to those. We've been out to as many of the, I call them business area meetings. I'm not sure if that's what they're called across England and Wales, but the forums that yachts have, I think normally at yacht manager level um, within regions. We've been out to a number of those as the work's developed and just kept people updated on it. We've worked closely with the YJB and we've heard already from the Ministry of Justice this morning in terms of some of the work that's developing around national standards and the whole reform change programme. Not necessarily to align with the work, you know, we're an independent inspectorate and we will inspect against the standards that we believe to be the best standards to get the best outcomes for young people, but certainly what we're keen to do and certainly the YJB and the MOJ are keen to do likewise, is make sure that in any of the work streams that we're developing, we're not giving out contradictory messages or asking for different things across each of the departments. So that's been really important to us as well. We've got today's workshop at the convention, and something quite new for us, we've got a stand as well. <laughs> um, so please, please come and visit the stand. Um, there is some more information on there about the work as it's developing, and I think we've got four or five staff, uh, myself, a team of inspection staff as well, who were able to talk through in much more detail um, than we'll manage during today's seminar. So if you can, um, please find time to visit us. I've also been asked by a colleague to mention Twitter. Um, so apparently you need to put stuff on Twitter um, to do with the convention, and if you want to mention, is that right, Tracy? Do you want to say a bit more about that? We can't be seen to fail. Okay, thanks, Tracy. Very eloquently put. Um, we've done some work with academics as well. Um, I hope when you see the standards in some more detail, you will notice a real shift in terms of what we're focusing our work on and what we're looking at in terms of effectiveness for yachts. And a lot of that has been fed in by youth justice academics. It's been everything from points around the language that we use to keeping us up to date in terms of the most recent research. 
and we've got an online consultation on our standards and some aspects of how we'll rate services. That consultation is open now and you can access that. Th I've got the link actually on the presentation, but you can access that through our website and that's live until the 8th of December. So please do, if you possibly can, have a look at that. We, we're taking it, you know, it's genuine consultation. We've said this right the way through the events. In trying to improve services and drive up performance, we recognise that we have got to have a set of standards that we've built by consensus and that is not just the inspectorate saying we think that will work. Hence the absolute huge effort that we are rightly putting in in terms of consultation and developing in, in our, our work in, in response to your responses. So it's really, really important for us if people can find the time to, to, to make those formal um, suggestions to us on online. Okay, before we get into the detail of, of what's in the new youth programme, I thought it'd be worth just talking to you about some of the guiding principles. So these are the things that are important to us in developing the programme of work. We want to make sure that what we do is entirely transparent so that there are no surprises. So when it comes to your turn to be inspected, it is right that you know what to expect from us and from the process. And hopefully when we talk a little bit later on about the methodology, you'll see how that as a principle, um, how we've tried to work towards that. Inspectorates talk a lot about triangulating findings. And what, what that actually means is um, looking at one area of work, making a judgment about what it tells us, and then looking across another area of work and matching the two up and seeing it to build a consistent picture, or to hopefully build a consistent picture. And that's what we mean when we talk about triangulate. What you'll see when I give you the detail of the standards is that we've got three sections or domains, as we call them, <laughs> that we've split our standards into. And it's absolutely crucial for us that we're able to have each of those domains essentially talk to one another um, as we make judgments about the service. We want to allow for innovative or un more unusual work to be judged against the standards. So we'll write that into the inspection methodology. We'll make sure that there is space to, uh, to allow yachts to do that, to demonstrate that to us. We want the, the program, the inspections, to be achievable for inspection staff. This is actually a lot more challenging than it sounds. Um, like all organisations, um, we don't have an infinite set of resources and we need to rationalise those resources and make sure we put them into the right places. We are including a number of new areas of work across all yacht inspections that we haven't had in all yacht inspections before. And they are out of court disposal work, that's brand new for us. Work on interventions, which previously we only covered when we did our full joint inspections. And the third really big difference for us is that we're going to be looking at partnerships, governance, management arrangements across all of the yachts that we inspect rather than just those that are subject to full joint inspection, as has been the case in the past. So that's clearly more work. We're probably going to in be inspecting yachts more frequently, so we've got to come up with something, a model of work, that is achievable for us and the resources that we've got. So that's another one of our principles. And then I guess the flip side to that is to minimise the burden on inspected bodies, so on yachts, while still enabling us to get the sufficient evidence to demonstrate whether or not yachts have met the standards that we've set. So quite challenging, actually, all told. So they're the principles that we're working towards, and hopefully you'll see how they're borne out as I give you the detail of, of the work. Okay, so this slide shows the structure of our inspection standards. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago the word domains. And what we mean by domains is essentially it's a grouping. So it's a grouping of inspection standards that we can make a judgment about or a series of judgments to inform the overall rating that we give to a yacht. And you will see that, that some more detail as we go on. Um, underneath the domain sit a set of standards. Underneath those are a series of questions. And underneath those are a set of prompts. It probably sounds quite complex and layered as it's set out like that. It is quite complex and layered until you get into the detail of it. And then actually, we hope, we think, um, it makes sense and that you'll see the logic to it. And you will also see then how the process works back up from the level of questions and prompts to inform the judgments that are made at the domain level. Now, sitting alongside that 
structure, we've got <laughs> essentially what's an internal document called the CARAG, or the Case Assessment Review and Guidance Document. That's, sorry, Case Assessment Rules and Guidance, and that is a document that inspectors use when they are assessing cases or making judgments about governance and leadership. That's what they use to inform those judgments. So it's part technical guidance and partly about thresholds. I'm going to ask Avatar to just come along and, and say a little bit more about that. It, it means a lot to us, but it will be probably be less clear what the kind of purpose and function of that is. Um, and if possible, to give a couple of examples of, of what that might look like in practice. Do you want to come and stand here or? I don't think you'll be able to quite tell. Yeah. Hello? No. Nope. Okay, um, is that all good? Can you all hear me? Fabulous. There is a thumb up, which is always a good sign. Okay, very quickly. So as Helen um, described the picture there um, in terms of uh, the different layers um, within the inspection programme, I'd like to just um, speak with you briefly um, about something um, that sits um, below uh, the prompts, but helps an inspector to make some judgments about whether that work has been done um, at a sufficient level. Now, what I'd like to do is give you an example, and I think that um, Ian Dexter kindly put on your um, chairs um, some leaflets, and if you can just turn to um, the leaflet that is talking about organisational um, delivery, if you have it, um, that'll be great. If you don't, um, please don't um, be anxious. But that particular, the first example I'm going to give you is from um, Domain One, um, which Helen um, um, told us about. And the um, title of that particular domain is around organisational um, delivery. And underneath that, um, you should have four... Um, kind of standards. The first one reads, um, the governance and leadership of the yacht supports and promotes the delivery of a high quality, personalised and responsive service for all children and young people. Hopefully everybody can kind of um, um, see that particular sentence. Um, if you can't, don't worry. That is um, the standard for um, uh, one of the standards within that domain under organisational delivery. Um, underneath that, um, as Helen said, um, there are some questions and prompts. Um, you're unlikely to have those um, on that um, um, A5 sheet of paper, but once, you've, once you actually look at the full set, um, under... Um, the first standard, there will be a question. And the question on this particular um, domain, which is looking at governance and leadership, is the first one, um, is, is there a clear local vision and strategy for the delivery of a high-quality, personalised and responsive service for all children and young people? And the prompt is, does the Yacht Management Board set the direction and strategy for the yacht? So in a way, um, without sounding um, as if we're at school, um, those are kind of like the exam questions. And, um, and what the um, inspector um, will need to do is to be able to make a judgment um, from a, a range of conversations, reading materials, meetings, as to how far um, the evidence actually meets those particular questions and prompts. Now, what Helen mentioned about the case assessment rules and guidelines, um, those are basically further um, questions. And in the past, people might be uh, familiar with the concept of kind of quality indicators. Um, you know, what are the things um, that make up um, good evidence to support that particular question? So at the moment, the work that I've been doing um, is to um, uh, begin to formulate um, some questions 
which are going to be helpful in determining how well um, that the work in that particular standard is being carried out. So as a live example, these are just some of the questions that the inspector um, will be considering. So he or she will be asking and trying to decipher, does the management board have a strategy stroke business plan for the youth justice service? Is the yacht management board proactive in driving change? How well are plans from different agencies integrated into the work of the yacht? How well is the management board led? Are board members at the appropriate strategic level and or able to make a strategic contribution? And how does the board ensure that it is listening to the voice of children and young people? Um, what is the evidence? So what you have there um, are a series of um, indicators um, within the case assessment rules and guidelines which will help the inspector. And this particular document, um, although it is something that um, you know, the inspectorate is putting together, again, it will be available um, to inspecting bodies. So it's not going to be kind of, you know, well, we're not going to tell you what we're looking for. So just as in the current um, program, um, and as Helen said, you know, there is going to be total transparency. So under that standard, um, there is a question that has to be considered. And underneath the question, um, there are going to be um, some um, issues, questions, indicators for the um, inspector to make a judgment against. And as a result of going through that process, um, she or he will be able to say yes, um, the work there is of a sufficient standard or is of not a sufficient standard. Are we, are we with me so far? Yeah, okay, great, good, nodding, right. The other one, um, just to say, is under the court disposals, um, which is the second domain, and again, um, you'll have that on your seat. And the first um, standard um, you know, talks about um, assessment, and in this particular um, uh, section, the question is, does assessment sufficiently analyse how to keep other people safe? And there is a supplementary question, which is around, is assessment sufficiently multi-agency, drawing on and involving partner agencies where required? Um, in working with children and young people, um, it's very, very rare that a singleton agency um, will be the sole uh, provider of interventions and services. And the likelihood is um, that there will be others. You know, it could be schools, it could be housing, um, it could be the third sector. And what this particular um, standard is trying to um, ascertain is really about um, the input that um, um, other agencies um, are having um, in terms of reaching an assessment um, that is a joint inspection. And here, some of the questions, the indicators um, that the inspector will be uh, considering is where relevant the assessment should be sufficiently multi-agency, i.e. incorporate appropriate judgments and opinions. Where other agencies are involved, the assessment should involve the identified partner agencies. A question, how far does the assessment look forwards as well as backwards? What evidence is there of different assessments being shared between agencies? So those are kind of examples of, if, of um, um, a kind of pathways that the inspector will be going down in order to be able to make a judgment. And, and as I said, again, um, um, uh, all this um, will be available um, in, in a transparent way um, for, for everybody, for, for inspected um, bodies um, to see. These are not fully developed, and the main reason for that is that 
It's not easy, it takes time, but also um, there is a live consultation currently taking place, and in order to honour that process, it's absolutely right that at the moment these should be kind of dynamic indicators um, rather than fixed indicators. One of the interesting um, conversations that we had um, during our consultation um, was about, you know, will standards change over time? And the answer we gave to that was that the standards will remain the same over the four, um, for four years cycle of this inspection program, but what is likely to change as um, things change um, is those indicators and those questions, but the standards themselves um, will remain. So as we test um, things out over the coming um, quarter, we will be able to see whether any of these um, assessment rules and guidelines um, are relevant, um, are they working, or do we need some additional ones? And we would be absolutely thrilled um, as you're looking through the um, document and um, uh, navigating your way through it, if there are any uh, contributions, specific contributions that you can make to help all of us, you know, to get to the heart of what we need to in order that, you know, positive outcomes um, can be achieved for children and young people, um, that would be mega. So thank you for that. Okay, so hopefully that feels a little bit clearer now in terms of where the detail sits underneath the standards. We've talked about different domains, and in a second I'm going to give you handouts. I'm not sure we've got enough, so we might ask you to have to be friendly with the person sat next to you and share, um, because we want you to have a look now at the detail. This is the stuff that we didn't have for the consultation events across all three domains, and we've got it now. So this is new, even for people that have attended the event. So we'd really appreciate you just, we'll give you 10 minutes or so, just to have a look at them not necessarily for us to take any lengthy feedback today. There is an online consultation, please put it on there. Um, but I do want people to have the opportunity to see them in a little bit more detail. Um, so essentially there are three domains. The first one is about organizational delivery. So this is all the strategic stuff that yachts do. It's about the management board, it's about the people and the staffing, who's involved in the yacht and how does it deliver. It's about the partnerships and services that the yacht has access to, has partnerships with. And it's about the yacht infrastructure as well. So do the ICP systems work? Um, is the structure around home visits right? Is there a yacht office? Is the delivery mechanism working effectively, etc.? So that's all the stuff that's under domain one. The way I think of it is it's everything that isn't about case assessment fits under domain one. That's probably the neatest way, I think, to, to describe it. Domain two is what we've traditionally done under our case assessments through the InfoPath tool. So when our inspectors come out onto site at a yacht and, and read a file and interview the case manager, that's the activity that now sits under domains two and three. Domain two is the stuff that traditionally we've done with court disposals, so referral orders, YROs, and custody cases. And it's assessment planning, delivery, and review. It's based on the Aspire model. It will be really familiar to all of you. And domain three is more of the same but slightly different because we've not got standard four around reviewing. Standard four is about joint working in recognition of the, the delivery landscape of the out-of-court work. I said earlier that the out-of-court work is, is new to us and it is absolutely new to us in its current format as part of a core inspection programme. We have recently completed a thematic piece of work um, completed by Ian Menery, who is here for the two days and available if anybody on the stand, if anybody wants to come and talk through any of the detail with Ian. We've also got, just for today, Andy Reid. Do you want to stand up and just give a wave, Andy? Andy is the HMIC FRS now, Inspector, um, who is part of that joint thematic piece of work. So, again, if you see Andy knocking about, please make use of him if you've got any questions around how we got to the joint working elements of, of that third domain. Okay. Tracy's going to bring the handouts round now. This is the detail of the draft standards. This is the stuff that's online for consultation. 
So if we give people about 10 minutes to have a look through, there will be an opportunity at the end of that if there are any burning questions that you want to ask us today, then please do. Um, but other than that, the, the response to the standards will be on the online consultation. Okay, everybody, I think we're about ready to start again. <laughs> Sounds like there some, were some uh, lively discussions there, so thanks very much for that, and hopefully we will hear about those in some more detail, either on the stand this week or online. We probably have got time for literally two questions, if there are any real burning issues that anyone wants to put to us right now before we move on. So if that's the case, if anyone wants to put the hand in the air and hand in the air and yeah, at the front here, do we need a mic? Uh, Are you happy to shout? So they wouldn't actually say what they thought a reasonable case load actually was is the way most people came up with the phrase I don't know what a reasonable case load is. So it'd be helpful, I think, if you came out straight away and said what you mean by reasonable. Mm -hmm. And the second one is um, you need to do intrinsic framework. So when we got a, a, a short quality scheme meeting, in our inspection we said um, this is this represents Okay, I'll take the second question first. We've still got the report to do on the, the work to do on the report format. And we've not had that discussion or, or certainly made that decision yet. We, we're very interested in hearing about the context of a local area, um, but the work's not done. It's, it's really as simple as that. In terms of the reasonable workload, it would be great if we could get to a figure. And we've, we've, we've been asked this before, and we may well get there. We haven't, again, we're not there yet because we're still at the standards and methodology stage, and we all know that reasonable varies from one yacht to another. So there's, there's a challenge there. I don't think it's insurmountable. And that's the aspiration that we can say, actually, that's reasonable because it's X amount. There may be some kind of equation or algorithm that sits underneath that. Might not be as simple as a, a specific number. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that's what we want to get towards. Thank you. We could take one more question. No? Great. Okay, we'll move on then. The next thing we wanted to talk to you about was rating of yachts. Um, we've done some work on this, and we've got some more to do. Hopefully it will look fairly familiar to you. It's based on um, the, the kind of industry standard in terms of ratings. It's a model that Ofsted use. There are four levels, inadequate requires improvement, good and outstanding. And what we're proposing we do, and this is part of the consultation, and the maths that sits underneath all of this is online as part of the consultation framework, so you can really see the detail of how we would make judgments against the standards that you've got. So if for no other reason, please go online and have a look at the rating maths um, as well, because we recognise it's... It's not there yet, it's not perfect, and it may or may not be exactly what we end up with. Um, so absolutely all feedback in terms of, of the ratings is equally important to us. Um, we, what we're proposing is an overall rating for each yacht. So we will come out at the end of an inspection and be able to say that we've rated the yacht inadequate, reprising, requires improvement, good or outstanding. Sitting beneath that, there will be a number of other ratings, and they will either be at domain level, so there will either be three of them, one for each of the three domains, or, will, or they will be at standard level, and th the decision isn't made yet, it's up for discussion and it's out for consultation. That's also in the, in the consultation information on the website. There's, as always, some, some pros and cons to doing it each way, and some of it, actually, the devil really is in the detail in terms of how responses to particular questions and therefore judgments about standards affect the ratings. So there's a lot of complicated stuff in there, but please try and take the time to have a look at that because we really welcome your feedback on that in particular. 
Just in terms of where we think yachts are at the moment, we did do quite a sort of quick and dirty piece of work a number of months ago when we were first thinking about rating services to try and get a sense of where we thought yachts were at the moment. Um, there's a load of caveats with this, as there often is with that um, with data type exercises. But we took the data that we've got from the SQS and FJI programs over the last five years and cut the data in terms of the FJI grade descriptors. So where we'd sort of had percentages around data and made decisions under FJI about where that yacht sat. We did that across the whole of the data set. And what that gave us was, I think, probably quite a reasonable sense of where the whole yacht sector was at at the moment. And it told us that had we rated yachts on the previous program, 9% of them would have come out as inadequate, 12% of them would have been outstanding, and the remaining yachts were in the middle two categories, with slightly more of them featured into the good rather than the requires improvement category. So th there's some real challenges in there, because the bulk of yachts are in the middle ground. We think it will be a much improved picture now, and this is one of the caveats. Some of that data is five and six years old, and we know how much things have changed since then. But that's just to give you a sense, really, that collecting the data isn't necessarily something new. We just haven't used it in this way before. OK, what we'd hoped to do was to give you the opportunity today to do some work on the methodology with us. We're not going to have time to do that, and actually the room doesn't really lend itself to do that either. So instead, we'll give you the information about the methodology and where our thinking is at currently. And I've got a slide as well about the process of single inspection and what that will look and feel like. And I would absolutely invite you to come and talk to us today if you've got any views about that or any comments or suggestions. What we're really keen to do in terms of the methodology is to not throw the baby out with the bathwater. So we know under SQS and FJI that there was some activities in there as part of the inspection that we found incredibly valuable in terms of giving us the evidence that we needed. But we know that there were other activities that the yachts wouldn't want to lose. Um, there may be activities that we didn't do that you want to add in, additional focus groups with staff. You might want to think about how we engage service users, children, young people, parents, carers, and victims. So please come and talk to us about the methodology. It really is at the, that stage of development where we can think we need to include such and such a thing or we need to make sure that that's in. And tell us what you liked about the previous programme because we can only base that on what we think we know and that's not always the right thing. Okay, so the challenge with the methodology is that we create something that gives us the right evidence to make judgments against each of the standards that you've seen so if it doesn't provide us with that evidence, we won't actually be that interested in it. And this harks back to one of the guiding principles that I mentioned earlier in terms of it being achievable for us um, and transparent for yourselves um, and not overly burdensome. So it's about making sure that everything that we collect and everything that we ask you for as part of the process, whether it's evidence in advance, whether it's meetings with senior personnel, interviews with, with case managers, that we can clearly say we are doing that activity because that links to that piece of work in under the standards. So if it, if it can't be measured for part of the standards framework, then it's not going to be in. So then just reminding ourselves really of the, of the guiding principles, um, it's transparent, robust, flexible, got to enable us to triangulate. Hopefully that makes more sense now you've seen the standards and you know what the domains look like and achievable and proportionate across the piece. What we're proposing in terms of process is one week of field work for single agency inspection and two weeks of field work for joint agency inspection. So the majority of yachts will be subject to single agency inspection. They will last for five days, that's Monday lunchtime through to Friday lunchtime, and the activity on site that, that will be undertaken will be a mixture of case assessments and activities to enable us to get the information that we need for the domain one judgments. So interviews with um, key partners. For anybody that's been through an FJI, there will be elements of the single agency inspection that will now feel similar to week two of the FJI. 
The single agency inspection, as the name suggests, is HMI probation only. So we've not got our partners with us, unfortunately, on those inspections. We'd love to do more joint work, but resources are finite, as we all know. We can't necessarily do as much as we'd like. So we're trying to replicate the best bits of the full joint inspection under the single agency inspection. And most of that activity sits under domain one. For the joint agency inspection, it will be two weeks of field work. It is likely to be a week of field work and then a week off site and then a second week of field work with partners. I can only say likely to be because it's not finalized at this stage, but the model seemed to work. Um, we'll probably move around some of the activities that we undertake in each of those weeks, but we think that middle week in between works quite well all around. We've had a lot of discussion. If you think about the standards that you've just seen and the relationship between the three domains, we've had a lot of discussion about what we should do first. So is it the case that we should assess all of the cases that we're going to look at across court disposals and out of court work that will then give us some key lines of inquiry to follow up to make judgments and gather evidence on domain one? So that's one side of the coin. And then the other side is actually we should have all of the evidence in advance, all of the information that we need around organisational delivery to then inform what it is that we're looking for under the case assessment. It's a bit chicken and egg in some respects and there's a real challenge for us in terms of getting it right and it's now that the challenge kicks in, now that we're starting to think about methodology. What we want to do is be able to use cases both to validate what we are told through evidence in advance and also to inform what we ask when we come and do the activity with senior partners around domain one. So there's, there's a little bit of a dilemma there, but I think we're getting reasonably close to a solution on that. That's one of the things that would really welcome people coming to talk to us about if you've got any views, particularly around how the relationship between the domains might work. Can everybody see that okay? It looks very small on the screen I've got. Okay, this is a draft example of what we think the single, single agency inspection will look like. So th these are the inspections that most yachts will be subject to for a, a period of a week on site. And what this diagram does is describe all of the activity around that field work week over a five week period. Okay, so phase one, which we've got there as weeks minus two and minus one. The first thing that we'll do is announce the inspection. We are not proposing to change the period of announcement. We've always used an 11 day period uh, under the previous program for SQS and FJI. And that's worked well. People seem to like that as much as you use the term fairly loosely, but you know, in terms of suffi <laughs> sufficient um, time to be organized and, and sample the cases, etc., cetera, um, without the pre-inspection activity be taking on a life of its own and becoming something of an industry. So we think we're going to stick with that 11-day announcement period and announcements on a Friday morning. The week following is the Yachts Week to gather evidence and to start getting the long list of cases together. And then the, f the week after that, once we've got the, uh, midway through that week, once we've got the cases and we've got the evidence in advance, that's over to the lead inspector then, which isn't to say the yacht won't be doing activities to get ready for the inspection, but that's a set week for our lead inspector to spend with evidence in advance in front of them, starting to think about domain one, about the relationship between, between domain one standards and the standards in the other two domains, working out what the key lines of inquiry might be, planning the approach of the inspection, are we interviewing the right people, and also, and this is a crucial bit, which will, I think, feel a little bit different. We, we want some kind of evidence meeting with the yacht, ideally in that week before the field work begins. Now, we've got a little bit more work to do in terms of if we can resource that, because it means us getting people out to you the week before, and we're not sure yet if that will impact too much on how many inspections we can do across a year. But whether it's the week before the inspection, or whether it's the Monday that we arrive on site, we want an evidence meeting with the yacht that will enable us to get a real picture of some of the domain one work. So 
When we've done FJI on the Monday afternoon when we arrive, ourselves and all the partners have are, are presented to by the local authority chief executive or the chair of the management board about the work that their yacht is doing to reduce reoffending, and that has been absolutely invaluable to us, not only in terms of what it tells us, the content of the presentation, but also in terms of, of seeing the ownership of the yacht's work, seeing some of the dynamics across the local authority and the yacht, and it's something like that in terms of this evidence meeting that we're trying to replicate. So we're not sure about the detail of that. We can't say to you now we'll be asking for a presentation on X, Y, or Z. We've not set, to use Avatar's analogy, the kind of the homework question around that. Um, but there will be something about you giving us some input to direct some of those key lines of inquiry um, to help us with the Domain 1 work. There'll be the usual planning activities the week before field work, whether that's undertaken in person or as a telephone planning meeting, again, we're not sure, some work around resources to do there. Okay, and then phase two is the field work week, we call this week zero, and this is where we will look at the cases for domains two and three in the kind of traditional way that we've done before, really. So through a case assessment tool, whereby we'll, we'll fill that in, we've called it an info path tool, we make judgments through that tool, based on the questions and the prompts that you've seen. That then gets sent off to our number crunching people who give us back a whole data set of information against each of those standards. So domains two and three, the judgments against the standards will be made entirely on those case assessment scores from that field work week. So that, that's actually exactly the same as, as the FJI model. That's one of the things that we've felt has worked, we've, has worked fairly well. The lead inspector during the field work week will probably look at some cases as well. We think that that's a really valuable thing for them to do, even if it's just a small number at the start of the week. And then the rest of their week is likely to be spent on activities for domain one. So, for instance, interviewing the chair of the management board, meeting with a focus group of operational managers, um, talking to various partners. You will always know in advance what that what the schedule for that week will look like. We know that some local areas will need to change that depending on how the local structures work. But thinking about the transparency that we talked about earlier, we're keen that everybody will know what to expect when we ring up on that Friday morning and make the announcement call. So you will know which partners we'll need to see and when during that week, which isn't to say we have to see them then, but it will give you the opportunity to line them up to know who it is and how it's going to work. So much more structured, I think, really, than it's felt before. Within that, we do want to allow not be too prescriptive and allow yachts to be able to demonstrate that any innovative work, anything that's a bit different or unusual, or in fact anything that's problematic for them. So we are hoping to be able to have what we'd call one free slot during the second half of that week um, for yachts to showcase or otherwise anything that it is that, that, that they want us to see that, that wouldn't otherwise be covered. Some of the bigger yachts will have a deputy lead inspector as well, not all of them, not the smaller ones, because that would just be too, uh, would, wouldn't be proportionate. And they will, their role for the bigger yachts will be to support the lead inspector and to focus on some of the logistics and the planning and making the inspection happen. So a slightly different role. The third phase, so this would be the fourth and fifth weeks, um, or we'd call them week plus one and plus two. This is when we'd have a ratings meeting, which is, you know, we're away from the yacht then, to all intents and purposes, we've finished, the inspection's closed. It's about moderating and report writing in terms of that fourth week. We are not expecting lead inspectors to make rating decisions in isolation. That wouldn't be right and it wouldn't be fair. So we're going to have ratings panels and we're replicating this in the adult world as well on Monday mornings following inspection field work weeks whereby we can look at the findings, we can look at the evidence from cases, what key lines of inquiry have told us, what we know about domains, et cetera, domain one, etc., and have all of that work um, considered challenged, again, something that we've done under FJI with partners to make sure that we're reaching consistent and the right judgments um, for every single inspection that we do. We've then got some report writing later that week and report editing as well in the week following, so quite a tight turnaround period. 
That's what we're thinking at the moment. The details obviously to go in. We haven't got a schedule to present to you today to say this is what it will look like. But that's what I, where our thinking is at at the moment based on those principles that I described earlier. Any, I, I dread saying this, but any questions, any burning issues on any, we're not gonna get to all of them if there's a lot, but if there's any points of clarification that you just want me to deal with now, then shout up. Great. Do you mean in terms of the, the learning from the pilot? Yeah, um, we've got a team working on this, so we're not doing it alongside our day jobs. You know, essentially, it feels like it sometimes, but you know, essentially, we aren't doing any other inspections aside from thematics and JTI during the spring. So when we leave whichever yacht it is that we inspect at the beginning of April, we've got two months until we're back on site. So that's plenty of time. Um, to make any final, hopefully it would just be final changes to standards. You know, we, we should have it just about right by then. Um, the methodology may very well need tweaking, and that's the bigger job because that involves our partners as well as ourselves. We're working closely with partners already. We had a couple of workshops the week before last, so they're very involved in, in setting out some of the methodology. So we hope it will be small changes, but we've built that in. There's plenty of time for us to be able to do that. Okay, I'm going to attempt to cover quite a number of tricky issues um, fairly quickly now. These are all around selection and follow-up. So in terms of frequency of inspection, what we're aiming to do at the moment is to get to every single yacht at least once every four years. So that is not hugely dissimilar to what we've done previously. The bit that will feel different is that we are going to take a risk and non-predictable approach to the areas that we select to go to. When we say risk, we'll t we've yet to write the criteria. I feel like I'm saying that a lot today. It's the stage that the work's at. When we talk about risk, we're talking about volume, complexity, um, all of the data that we have about yachts and all the caveats that go with that. And we'll have a whole kind of mechanism and risk criteria about how we select which yachts we go to more frequently than others. So a number of people during the consultation events quite rightly asked or suggested, you know, I'm in a much bigger yacht. Does that mean I'm going to be inspected more frequently um, than a counterpart maybe in a smaller yacht? And in reality, the answer is probably yes. It's not a definite yes because what we want to do is come up with a process whereby we take into account all that basket of measures, if you like, of which volume is one, and focus our energies on those yachts that we think are the riskiest. It's an inexact science, but it's what we've got to, to work with. So for argument's sake, if we have a yacht that is a huge yacht and is performing in poorly in terms of national indicators, and we have a yacht which is a much smaller yacht but is performing in exactly the same way, then we would be foolish to go to the smaller yacht over and above the bigger yacht because that's where we can have the most impact. So that's the bottom line in terms of the criteria that the volume of cases, the size of the yacht, is one in a number of factors. And then aligned to that, we want to be really keen that we don't come up with a system whereby you can predict when you're going to be inspected because we recognize in terms of driving performance improvement that the, if you like, threat of inspection is quite powerful. You know, and if you can predict when it is that we're going to come along, you're more likely to work to that rather than to develop your service away from it. So it, it's a real fine balance, and we've got people with much bigger brains than mine working around some of the maths and the criteria around that. Um, and again, that's something that we will publish, so you will know um, largely how we, we reach some of those decisions. We've had something called InfoBank before, um, and that has been a mystery, I think, to many people who haven't inv been involved in it. It's not that mysterious, actually. Um, it's a bank of information 
that we collect along with partner inspectorates and that is also fed into by the YJB who aren't a member of Infobank but feed information into us that to determine where and when we inspect which yachts and also how we inspect them. So previously, whether it was SQS or FJI. So some of that is about the risk criteria and the decisions around that. We're going to continue with that. We're calling it something else. We're calling it the Youth Offending Inspection Group for a whole host of reasons. Um, and that is about informing, we'll have a set of criteria, informing some of those decisions, but crucially, it's going to have a role now around follow-up and how we make sure, in terms of our impact, that we maximise the impact of the inspection. So something around follow-up and recommendations as well. I think joint inspection I've probably covered, but if there are any further questions on that, please do come and find one of us on the stand over the next couple of days. Follow-up activity, this is another thing that we're thinking about but haven't made any decisions around yet. So previously, under SQS, we haven't done any follow-up. We've come in, we've made a, a, a screening judgment about the, the casework of the yacht, and then we've kind of left them to it for three, four, five years. We want to get better at follow-up activity, and the reason we want to get better at it is to maximise the impact of the inspection. We do do follow-up activity under FJI. We, we ask yachts to, or well we have done, we've asked yachts to provide us with an action plan or an improvement plan, which we then check to see that it, it hits, the, hits the mark in terms of what the recommendations have been for that area. And then we've handed it over to the YJB. And unless there have been problems, we haven't done anything more than that. Both ourselves and the YJB have recognised that we can do better than that and that we need to do better than that in terms of keeping some of those... Um, making sure that some of those recommendations are happening. We are not specifically talking about reinspection when we talk about follow-up activity. That, that may be a part of it in a very small number of more concerning areas, but it's not, it's not going to be the norm for us. Instead, we're looking at what we might be able to do in terms of one-day monitoring visits for yachts that haven't come out, out of inspections quite so well, what we may, may be able to do in terms of the work that we do with the Youth Justice Board, and the way that they um, support and monitor yachts in terms of improvement. So again, just very much up for um, discussion around some of that, around what would be most helpful, and recognising for us that follow-up activity isn't just about the yacht, but crucially it's about the yacht management board as well. And we need to make sure that w whatever we come up with there is going to be pointed in the right direction. Okay, we are nearly out of time, so I just want to whiz through and tell you what's what we've got planned for the next sort of period, um, and also ask people about um, volunteering for pilots as well. Um, we'll finalise the methodology. That's part of the work that's happening now. It's part of you coming to us and saying, this is what we liked, this is what we didn't like, you need to include X, Y, and Z. So that's happening, and will continue to evolve right the way until the final pilot inspection in April of next year. So lots and lots of work still to do around that. We will publish a final version of standards before we launch Programme 18. Programme 18, I should have said earlier, is when that, that's what we call in the live inspection. So the inspection is that will start late spring of next year. So you'll see, you've got the standards now. They will continue to evolve as part of the consultation and as part of the pilots, and then we'll publish the final version before the first live inspection. Testing and pilots start in December. We've got the first one in just a few weeks' time. Avatar's leading that one. We've got a further pilot in January, February time, and then a joint pilot in the spring. We've had a small number of volunteers for those. If anybody else that hasn't volunteered would like to do so, <laughs> please come and see us and tell us, because tomorrow really is the last day um, when we can, can, can consider um, which yachts we're going to go out to for those pilots. People are, some people are looking at us if they say, why on earth would you want to volunteer for, to pilot this? There's some real benefits to it, actually. Um, uh, particularly, I think, the earlier pilots, um, in the sense that you get to experience what the inspection will feel like, the, the logistics of it. You get a sense of how the standards will work. Um, and, and how the ratings processes will work as well. We are not, from the very first inspection, producing reports and undertaking ratings. We're going to build on the processes as we go. The first pilot is likely just to test casework in domains two and three. 
So anybody that's interested, come and see us or drop me an email by the end of tomorrow. I'm being told that we've run out of, run out of time. Criteria for selection, I think I've covered. Case sampling, again, some further work to do around this, the challenge being that we're now including out-of-court cases that we didn't have before. Evidence in advance, again, we've had that previously from you in terms of SQS and FJI inspections. It will look similar, but there will be more stuff around partnerships and leadership. Local assessors, we want to use local assessors again, and we've got some leaflets around on chairs and on the stand about how people can go about becoming a local assessor. And the report format, we've still to do some work on. We've got some ideas in terms of what that will look like. It will reflect the rating and the standards and will include some more context than it has done before. So that's a real whistle-stop stop tour um, in a bit less time than we had originally. Before we wind up, are there any final questions that people want to ask in, in this group? I'm sensing people are hungry and ready to go. Okay, thanks very much for your time.